Hello, it's a cold January afternoon here in Pennsylvania, and I'm standing next to where the Susquehanna River and the Juniata River meet. We brought the paleo digger with us, and tomorrow we're going to dig deeper. Well, I arrived here along the Susquehanna River at about 10.30 this morning. We unloaded the track loader and the paleo digger machine, connected everything up, made sure it all worked. And tomorrow we're going to uh, dig two test holes uh, as part of a highway project. Uh, we have to dig down three and a half meters at least. If we find artifacts that deep, we'll probably keep digging deeper. And um, this will be the first test of the machine away from our shop. Um, so hopefully everything goes as planned because it'll be difficult to fix things if uh, we have breakdowns. Uh, it'll also be the first test of the level logger and we're going to see how well it works at uh, digging down to the deeper levels and whether it's able to keep track of our excavation depths. And um, I'm not sure what we're going to find, but uh, hopefully um, there's a, definitely a chance of Paleo Indian being here. Behind me is the mouth of the Juniata River and in front of me is the Susquehanna River. And the Susquehanna is nearly a quarter of a mile wide at this location. We don't know for sure if the Paleo Indians used canoes or watercraft to navigate the rivers, but we kind of have to assume that they did. Our location here along the Susquehanna River is fairly close to the Shoup site. The Shoup site is one of the best known Paleo Indian sites in Pennsylvania. It's a location in an upland setting where a lot of fluted points, end scrapers, and Paleo Indian tools have been found by surface collectors. These people were probably using the resources along the Susquehanna River as well. So our dig location is one of the possible locations where the Paleo Indians could have visited. Sometimes we do archaeology in relation to uh, highway construction projects. Uh, whenever there's a new highway or an existing highway is being widened or a new bridge being installed, uh, the archaeology is part of the environmental impact study. And in, in those cases, we t do archaeological testing to see if there are any archaeological sites that might be uh, destroyed or uh, damaged by the construction project. Uh, when these projects occur along the larger rivers, the floodplains often have sediments that are very deep. Uh, it's, it's possible to find archaeological remains tens of feet deep. This is where the paleo digger machine comes in. We're able to go down and test the soil. We dig the soil and bring it out and screen it and see if there are artifacts at those deeper levels. So this project has some unique challenges. The initial survey of the site found that there was a coarse layer of fill covering the natural layers of soil. And this coarse layer of fill consisted of chunks of concrete and gravel. Well, the paleo digger machine isn't able to dig through coarse concrete and gravel. A backhoe was brought in to remove the coarse fill and then the archaeologists dug a one by one meter square down about five feet deep. This is where the payload digger comes in. At five feet deep, they stopped digging by hand and inserted a 24 inch culver pipe vertically into that one by one meter hole and then backfilled around it. The paleo digger will be pulled over top of that culver pipe and will continue the excavation from where the archaeologists stopped and will go down to at least three and a half meters deep. When we arrive at the site in the morning, we'll have to do some prep work first. The culver pipe presently is sticking out of the ground about two feet and we'll have to take a chainsaw and cut that off level with the ground. That way we can set up the paleo digger uh, over top of the hole. With the top of the culver pipe removed, we could begin setting up to excavate the first test pit. The bottom of the hole measured 7 feet or 2.2 meters deep. This section of the highway is very busy. We have to be careful moving the machine to the test pits. All of the workers are wearing yellow high visibility safety vests.
With the machine set up over the hole, we unfold the rotary screen table to its working position. And then I set the track loader to transfer hydraulic power to the external hydraulic controls. With every lift of the auger bucket, I remove 10 centimeters of soil. Unfortunately, the level auger that I built did not work in the cold weather. So we're using a measuring tape to measure the depth of the hole and recording that depth after every level is extracted. The soil is then transferred to the screen basket. The screen in the basket has the standard quarter inch hole that's used for most archaeology in the eastern United States. The rotary motion is the most efficient way to sift large volumes of soil rapidly. Yeah, I'm back to this hole. Yeah, almost all the way to the base of excavation. As my associates screen the soil, I continue digging the next level. This multi-step process makes the excavation more efficient. What remains in the screen basket is then transferred to a stationary sorting screen. Artifacts are collected into Ziploc bags and the bags are labeled with the depth at which the artifact was found. The test pit was excavated to a depth of 4.32 meters or a little more than 14 feet. The soils were very sandy and the only artifact we found was one chert flake. So what, what did I yeah. miss this morning? That could be my head. Um, it's a bit harrowing getting across the highway. <laughs> and uh, I finished uh, making the repairs to the machine from the stuff that we broke yesterday and uh, making some upgrades with uh, newer type of pins. And uh, we walked the machine over, got the plastic Ooh. off, got the site ready, and we started about 9 o'clock. A little after 9 o'clock we started digging. And so far, it's gone very well, a lot better than yesterday. Um, I was able to do a cycle one bucket of dirt every every about six minutes. Oh, it looks like it's not tilted as much. I put a I put a two by six underneath the arm to help hold the mass straight. It seems to be working okay. Anything else? It's lunch time. This test pit is located close to the bank of the Juniata River. The river terrace is about 4 meters or 13 feet above the water level. By extending the telescoping Kelly bar, the auger bucket can reach down deeper into the hole. Since we aren't finding any artifacts, we've decided to increase the excavation levels to 20 centimeters. This doubles the amount of soil removed with each lift, which makes the tub too heavy to lift up to the screen basket.
Additional digging bars are added as the hole gets deeper. The Paleo Digger machine in its present configuration can dig to a depth of 7 meters or about 23 feet. At a depth of 3.94 meters, water is accumulating in the bottom of the hole. So this will be the last bucket of soil that we will extract from this test pit. The soil is very sandy and unfortunately we did not find any artifacts. The machine makes a very clean cut. I think with the proper lighting and camera equipment, we will be able to visually log the soil profiles with accurate depth measurements. With the deep testing completed, the Pennsylvania Department of Transportation can move ahead with the next steps in this highway development project. I look forward to more deep testing along our rivers in our search for the first Americans. Join Archaeology X as we continue to dig deeper.